Welcome to Hope for You and for you, Kelly. <laughs> There's hope for all of us. It's a great place to be. <laughs> well, welcome to our healing series. Um, let me just go through my preamble. Okay. All the welcoming and all that fun stuff. So thank you everybody for watching, joining, uh, commenting, engaging. We know we'll hit at least 100 comments. Thank you for that. We are pre-recording this uh, for your enjoyment, pleasure. So um, what we're doing is we all are in Albemarle, North Carolina at the Boomerang Partner uh, meetings, camp meeting. So I know it's awesome, exciting. We're going to get impartation and we're going to come back and we're going to help release that into Hope City. So you want to be here Sunday because Kelly's going to go nuts. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> um, but if you're listening to Apple Podcasts or Spotify later, thank you. Leave us a rating review, all that fun stuff. Make sure you give us a thumbs up, like it, all that fun stuff. So we've been talking about healing. Kelly knows a few things about healing. Just a few. <laughs> Just a few. So the topic, what I talked to her about is, you know, because um, I forget what I titled this, but overcoming contra or defeating contradiction, I think is what it was. Um, and what I mean by that is the enemy comes at us and we have sickness or disease or something that seems like it just hangs on and doesn't want to go away. Mm -hmm. And if you've listened to yesterday's hope for you and you'll listen to tomorrow's hope for you, um, you'll hear me talk about how doctors are not the enemy. They're not evil people. And I'm not talking the few or the random or conspiracy theory. I'm not getting into all that. I'm just talking in general, doctors want to make you better, want to help you get yes. better. That gives them fulfillment and purpose and things. So uh, I said this yesterday that Brother Hagen said like he's known people who have died because they wouldn't take a 20 cent pill because they believe they were healed. And he said, you know, what I've always done, and I've heard him talk about it, is every time you take that pill, you thank God for your healing yes. and that you won't need to take this forever. Yes. And you keep taking it until the doctors say, hey, you don't need to take that. Or the Holy Spirit says, definitively, stop taking it. That's the only time you would stop taking it. Yes. I, I, for me, that seems fairly simple, but people get very legalistic or... Ooh, if I'm believing, I can't do anything outside of what I believe I'm healed. So I can't, you know, I don't have to eat right. <laughs> I don't have to exercise. I can eat Twinkies all day. Um, you know, just all the, and I don't have to take the medicine. Um, they say I'm a diabetic. Well, I believe I'm healed. So give me all the birthday cake. You can't, you know, I, we need to not be ridiculous in what we assume. Exactly. So... Um, I know you can give a little bit of history on, um, you know, you were diagnosed with MS. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to, I don't know if that's the one you want to talk about. <laughs> I, um, I have so much healing that I know. came in my life lately. So. But it's so funny because when you came to Hope City, and I, this isn't talking a brag about Hope City, it's bragging about what God's done. Mm -hmm. and, and really it's all happened not because of you being here, but because you've obeyed God. And that was one of the delivery systems that I'm talking about that I talked about yesterday. I'm recording three shows today, so I'm trying to remember which one it was in. <laughs> it was one of those. Yeah. So um, the one of the healing delivery systems was obeying God. Yes. And that delivers that can deliver healing. So um, when you came, it's so funny because when you first came here, you were on what, 26 different medications? I was on 29 medicines and two infusions, and I couldn't balance to stand up and worship in our sanctuary because of the slope floor. So, so when she came here, she was in the midst mm -hmm. of a fiery furnace. Yes. Midst of a trial <laughs> and the sermon series <laughs> that I was on was, what was it called? Well, it was a healing series. Yeah. But his sermon was because I said, I say so. <laughs> If you and, say so, yeah. Yeah, if you say so. And then he did... Which is all about the law of confession, which I'm talking about, you'll hear tomorrow on Hope For You. <laughs> and the whole time I was sitting there, it was my first service at Hope City, and I'm sitting there, and I was church hurt, and I came from an unbalanced situation into the sermon, if you say so. <laughs> and then 
to help me out, he said, if you say so, part two the next week. <laughs> and I will tell you, because he asked me, like, after I was here for a while, he said, how did you like your first service? I was like, you were a punk, and I was mad. Um, and um, the reason I was mad is because I've been diagnosed with MS. I've been dealing with it for 16 years, and... Um, I just felt like it was very important to talk to the people that's dealing with chronic mm -hmm. um, things because... It's like chronic contradiction. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, because what happens is you have to work in a different faith every day when mm -hmm. you get up in the morning mm -hmm. and you're dealing with that, that, that thing that's ri trying to rise up in mm -hmm. your life. And when you are getting up every day and believing God to walk... Yeah. Thank God um, that your headache will go away, you're working through brain fog or tiredness. Mm -hmm. When you hear the, the truth about healing from the Bible, it's just one of those things of you start thinking that it's not for you. You start thinking that it's just for them. Mm -hmm. You start thinking, what's wrong with me? <laughs> and yeah. also some people in all good measure, <laughs> in all good intentions, will come alongside you and tell you that you need to do this more or you need to do that more. And that's, that's they sympathize with you. They get right. into the pit with you and tell you how awful it is. Mm -hmm. And they're trying, they think they're comforting, but what they're doing is they're really constricting. Mm -hmm. They're constricting you from getting free from it. They're, mm -hmm. they're helping strengthen the binds of it, the uh, bondages of it. Um, and you, you went through a couple of things there that I want to kind of backtrack. You said you were church hurt, which we'll have a whole nother topic on that at some point, um, which is another, <laughs> just another way of saying walking in unforgiveness. But anyway, we'll move on. Um, but you said like, you know, dealing with a long-term chronic contradiction is you have to operate in a different type of faith. And what I think what you mean by that, and you can correct me if I'm misunderstanding, but you have to, you have to, like, if somebody's already healed, they're not dealing with this pain, they just get up and go about their day. Right. So, you, you know, and I, I said, I'll say this tomorrow, your faith is 100% always at work. Right. And so the law of confession is 100% always at work. Right. So whenever you are dealing with a constant contradiction and you said, like, you know, you, you battle these thoughts. And a couple of things I just want to point out is a lot of times those thoughts aren't your thoughts. They're implanted thoughts, not from Satan himself and the enemies at work at you or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's this world system is set up to steal, kill, and destroy. Right. And so the thoughts that come are, you know, from not from Satan himself, but from, you know, demonic inspiration, mm -hmm. things like that to where, man, you must really have done something terrible. Yes. You deserve this. And then there's things that pop up in our brain, memories, yes. pictures that pop up of things that we've done that we're like, oh man, maybe I do deserve this. And you get all these wrong, dumb thoughts yes. that the enemy, and again, I'm using that generally, I'm not saying Satan himself, but this demonic influence, this world order is coming to get us off track. Right. And convince us that maybe this isn't for you. Yes. So. Well, and that's part of the thing, you know, and I said church hurt, but it really is mm -hmm. about unforgiveness mm -hmm. and self-protection. Yep, yep. I believe it's the two greatest things that fights against sick, your, your healing is those things. Mm -hmm. Because when you walk in unforgiveness and self-protection, it, it's, it, it's one of those things like I'm going to hold on to self-protection. I'm going to protect myself, mm -hmm. but I'm also praying for God to heal me. <laughs> and for some reason that doesn't work. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so weird. <laughs> it's crazy. Isn't it? <laughs> um, and in fact, when my healing journey started was because I got COVID with MS mm -hmm. and I was in the hospital and they announced for the third time in my life that mm -hmm. I was going septic. Mm -hmm. And, um, the other two times I was in the hospital for 31 days, I lost my hair, everything shut down. Mm -hmm. And it was the third time. And I said, God, I know that you heal. Mm -hmm. And literally what was said back to me is. And I think this was only about three or four weeks after you started coming. Um, yeah. It so, was pretty well, close. I in September. This was in like beginning of December. Was yeah. it? Okay. All right. Yeah. So months, a few months. Okay. And um, 
because I was walking in unforgiveness and self-protection, I didn't connect with anyone really. And calling her pastor a punk. Yeah. <laughs> Which, you know. Um, <laughs> but um, I didn't really connect with anyone. Mm -hmm. I didn't really have like... And so when they came in and said that you're set there, I was like, oh, yeah, like right now would probably be the time that you call the church. Mm -hmm. I wonder how you do that. <laughs> um, like who, sh who should yeah. I call? Yeah. And, um, and God said, um, can I be your God? And I'm like, well, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I've done all this stuff, right? And yeah. you're asking me if you can be my God. He's like, well, then self-protection can't be your God anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> and I was I was laying in a hospital room with COVID. So you know when you have COVID, in the hospital, nobody can visit. Nobody can yeah. visit. Nobody walks in. And if they have, <clears throat> if they have to walk in, it's like they wait mm -hmm. until you like need four things because they have to get all suited up. Mm -hmm. You know. But now it's okay. They just walk in with a mask that you breathe through, and it's no big deal. Yeah. So so, <laughs> um, so I'm laying there and. Um, I just repented before God, and he said, if you'll say yes to me, I will heal your body and all the things around you. Just keep <laughs> on saying yes to me. And when I left the hospital, hmm. um, I would love to tell you that I ran out of the hospital, Yeah, yeah. and I was great. Um, when I left the hospital, um, I started physical therapy, and it took me five months before I could walk. Hmm. And um, It's funny, because I just gave a testimony, or this is so weird. Mm -hmm. I just recorded a testimony that you'll see tomorrow. From John Osteen, when his daughter was born, she had no muscle structure, like just, you know, the doctor's like, it's incurable, you know, all this, it's not good. She's going to die, basically. And he found out what the word said about healing, and he was consistent and how he didn't waver from what he spoke, as long as law of confession, what he's saying, which is tomorrow. Um, and... You know, and I said, and guess what happened after two months? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> guess what happened after four months? Nothing. But it's funny, you said five months. Five months, all of a sudden she started moving her head. Wow. And after a year, after seven months, she set up. And after a year, the doctor's were like, it's a miracle. She's healed. So, yeah. Well, after five months, <clears throat> I was able to have enough strength and balance um, that I was walking. Mm -hmm. And I came to Pastor John and said, <laughs> and said that um, basically what God had told me and that I am miserable being disobedient to God. <laughs> and um, do you have some stuff for me to do? And Did uh, I say, well, I've been waiting? Something <laughs> to that effect? Like, it's about time. I've been waiting for this. Well, yeah, he said he was waiting, and I was like, okay, we are now done. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, let's run. Never um, mind, she already proclaimed and declared, I'm never going to work for a church again. Yeah. So um, that's fun. <laughs> because, of, because of unforgiveness and self-protection in my life, I decided that I was never going to work for a church again. And granted, the situation you were in was not a good one. It was not, not good pro it, I'll say, not truly the heart of a pastor right. was in the position of pastor. Right. That's a good, safer way of saying it. And what I will say to that is that um, multiple times in my life, there's a decision that has to be made. Mm -hmm. And I always said this, I forgot it at that time. Um, at that time, I was very, I was very solid in my decision to walk in unforgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't call it that. I called it you know, it's time to not work at a church. Mm -hmm. I've done my duty. I'm getting older. Uh, we kind of have to let this go. I will go and be a good church lady on Sunday mornings. And I've never been a church person where you just show up late and you leave early. I worked very hard at it. I was I was like, mm -hmm. we are going to try this. And like it, was, it was funny because, like, you would be out in the car. And Jared and Nathan would be in talking to people because yeah. that's just what they've always done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nathan came in as a ministry kid. He yeah. came in. He he like almost took off his shoes. Like he mm -hmm. was, <laughs> and um, because that's what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, we were always. And I made this decision, and so I would leave on purpose and go sit in the car. Yeah. Um, it didn't matter how hot or cold it was. I'm gonna sit out here. We're not gonna do this. <laughs> um, and. So when this moment happened and I was in the hospital, I was like, here we go again. 
And <laughs> my first service that I came to, uh, the reason it hit so hard on me is because in, in many multiple situations, people would tell me that you just need to confess more. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to talk to the person right now that is having nerve pain, having muscle pain, having something chronic that you're dealing with, and you feel you're in survival mode, you're just trying to take care of your everyday Mm -hmm. thing. And I want to talk to you for a minute and say, I understand where you're at. And when you pray to be able to stand in the morning, when you pray to be able to walk through a work shift, Mm -hmm. when you are trying your best to provide for your family, and if you have children, take care of your children, take care of the things around you. And that and deal with the exhaustion when you get home. I want to tell you that God sees you. And when people talk about complete healing and you're not walking in complete healing, sometimes what happens is they they come alongside you and they tell you you need to confess more, you need to pray more, you need to do this more. Mm-hmm. And you're already in a survival mode. And it's so hard because you're like, why is it not for me? But it is for you. And I think a lot of times what we don't talk about is the faith that that person has when you're dealing with that contrary to the word thing in your body and you're getting up and you're doing your every day. That number one, God met me so many times in those times. Mm -hmm. And I did 16 years with MS and I would have seasons where I couldn't walk but train a team and take a team to another country. And as soon as my feet would touch the airplane, I would be fine for a week. Mm-hmm. And so in my head was this thought that God would supply my need mm-hmm. according to being obedient to his will. And that's all he wanted for me. Mm. You were just a tool, a means to an end. Mm. Right. And what I didn't <laughs> understand was that he loved me so much mm-hmm. that he didn't he didn't want me in a place where I was just able to do it. Yeah. He wanted me completely whole and healed and he's continuing that's continuing in my body because I have healing in my body and healing is happening. Mm-hmm. And so what's happening right now in my body is that my body is coming into an alignment to the truth that mm-hmm. is already existent that yeah. I am healed. Yep. And so those who are around me, you're going to see me and you're going to see my body change even more. Mm-hmm. But when I was here and when I started here, I couldn't balance and I couldn't walk to the point that they said that the nerve endings and reception of receptors of my feet were gone. That when I would step off of a curb, I would have to balance onto Jared and grab his shoulder every time I would step off. And so they told me that this is what you should have I- expect. And they gave me this walker thing mm. with a seat that I had. And then they started sizing me up for a wheelchair. And that was right before I was diagnosed with COVID and in the hospital. And so after five months, I came and uh, came to you guys and I started doing stuff. And mm-hmm. one day I will never forget, I was mm. just doing stuff. And what what changed was a lot of things, but one of the things that changed Mm -hmm. is I just stopped focusing Mm -hmm. on all of it. And the other thing that was like I was trapped in, I was afraid because of some past stuff, I was afraid to do stuff ugly. I was afraid to do stuff Mm -hmm. and show my pain and show where I was at. And um, so I just, but I got the word from God and I was like, I am going to say yes to you. Mm -hmm. And basically, I'm going to say yes to you to the point that let other people fire me kind Mm -hmm. of thing. Let them remove me. Mm -hmm. So I was here. I was working on stuff. I forgot something downstairs. I ran downstairs. I remember. (laughs) And I grabbed something, and then I ran back upstairs. And then I was like, oh, I need to grab something else. And I ran back downstairs. And the reason that's so significant is because when I first started here, I would wait for everybody to, to be not downstairs. 
and then I would balance myself mm -hmm. all the way up the spiral One staircase. step at a time. One step mm -hmm. at a time. And I would have to balance between the pole because it's a mm -hmm. spiral staircase. So I would have to balance between the pole and holding onto the rail each step. And she thought people didn't know this was happening. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> I didn't want people to know that it was happening. <laughs> But um, that day, I ran back up the second time, and you run past your office, mm -hmm. and you said, hey, did you know that you just ran down the steps twice and up twice? And I brushed it off, like, mm -hmm. yeah. And then I went to my office and cried. <laughs> <laughs> and just cried, because I had no clue. I had no clue that that was happening and that I was mm -hmm. walking. And then it, all of a sudden it just kind of hit me that I was standing during worship now. I was, um, I started walking the neighborhood mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I'm walking three or four miles, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, but I hadn't, I didn't see the significance of healing that had came in my life mm -hmm. in a short time. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, as I just continued to say yes, more and more things happened. So one of the things that happened is I was on 29 muds and two infusions. <laughs> and um, I got up one morning and I started laying out my pills. And I just heard, do you need all that? And I'm like, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, maybe. Uh, I mean, I've been on this for 16 years. You know, oh, like, gosh. Uh, and I realized in that moment that all the headaches were gone. Mm-hmm. I wasn't dealing with headaches anymore. I wasn't dealing with um, the nerve pain, to the mm -hmm. intensity that mm -hmm. it was. And so I went to the doctor and I said, <laughs> I think I need to let go of some of these meds. And um, they're a believer and they said, okay. Mm -hmm. So I actually shared the story with them. Mm -hmm. And I said, I am running. Like I am walking mm -hmm. and running and I feel my feet. And that, in that moment, I'm like, I feel my feet. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you know, and um, there were so many things that I did. Mm -hmm. Like I couldn't feel my fingertips. So even the way I would open a bottle or mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. all those things. And slowly, I didn't even know, but they started changing mm -hmm. dramatically in my life. And the way I got there is, um, number one, just realizing that God loves me so much he doesn't want me mm -hmm. as a tool. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want me. Um, he doesn't even want you healed to go do something. Yeah, right. He just wants you healed. Yeah. And in my <clears throat> head, I had it stuck in my head that I needed to be healed to go do something mm -hmm. for God. To fulfill his purpose, healing should happen in my life. And it really is, he just wants you healed. Yeah you mm -hmm. alone that's that's right now you know dealing with the pain that you're dealing with he wants you healed because he loves you yeah. mm -hmm. all the doing will happen afterwards uh, out of the overflow you yeah know, of you knowing who he is and his love for you yeah. <laughs> that's so good it's it's the the revelation, like I said, of his love for you, that it's not depend, not depend on what you do. <clears throat> he loves you and he gave Jesus. Yeah. So that's all the proof that you need that you're loved by God. But we get it so confused and we're such a performance minded culture that we have to do good and do certain things for God to really love us. Right. And that's so far from the truth. One of the things you said in the message that I didn't like the first time I heard it, um, and I'm going to butcher it, but it was basically, if you can believe in salvation, then you already believe in yeah. the complete healness. Yes. Heal, be Healing. Be completely whole and healed in your life. So if you believe in salvation, <laughs> you already believe in being completely healed yeah. and whole. Yeah. Not partly. Man, that's good. And... <laughs> <laughs> Remember the comment that I said. Uh, <laughs> but no. Um, and so how often do we accept salvation and somehow mm -hmm. we can't accept complete healing? I can't even talk. Wholeness or healing? Whole wholeness. Yes. Complete wholeness. I, I did that too a while ago. <laughs> and, um, and so 
And that really hit me because, you know, I know that you can be saved. Mm -hmm. But for me, I didn't see a way out of my Mm -hmm. cycle that I was in. Mm -hmm. And when you are dealing with a cycle, it is, um, you have to remember that you are a three-part being. Yep. And your body tends to go to what's familiar. Mm Mm-hmm. And so you might be walking in healing and then all of a sudden you have a response in your body. And it is so important to realize that my body is responding to what is familiar. Mm -hmm. And I then need to speak the truth to my body because my body is only doing what it knows, what it was doing before. And so if your body is doing something because it's familiar to something, then it just means that you need to speak the truth to your body and you need to minister to your body Mm -hmm. from your spirit into alignment again with the wholeness that God has for you. And I did not know that. And so there were so many things that I did not know that I was dealing with within Mm -hmm. my body. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that was one of the major ones is that when I would get up and there would be a symptom, then I put everything together, Mm -hmm. like my body, my spirit, Mm -hmm. everything Mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. So if my body is responding one way, Mm -hmm. then I must have failed in all the other ways. Yeah, that's, that's good. Good revelation to get that that's not what happens. Right. And I, I would just... This verse, and this is the mere Bible, but it's Hebrews 10, 35. I urge you not to relinquish your confident conversation. Persuasion and God's achievement in Christ redefines the idea of reward and confirms what grace reveals. Grace revealed your healing. Right. Your confident conversation, don't let that go. Your confidence is in him. In the commentary, it says righteousness is revealed by faith as a gift and not as a reward for keeping the law. And you might say, well, I wasn't keeping, it was a law mindset that you had to do something in order for God to do something. Yeah, it really was. <clears throat> mm-hmm. and, um, and it's crazy because I would talk to so many people about God's love. <laughs> I was, and I am known to go to people that yeah. most people wouldn't go to. And I would go to them yep. about God's love, God's salvation, how much God loves you. He loves you so much. And he's not looking for you to do anything for it. He mm-hmm. just loves you. Yeah. But here I was. I didn't know that he loved me in that manner. Hmm. And, um, and so as I started and as healing started coming into my life, um, it's kind of like all the truth kind of like mm-hmm. added up mm-hmm. at once and hope city gave me an opportunity to put all that into action. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so more and more healing came in to the point that MS was taken off completely off my medical record <laughs> about three months ago. <laughs> and, um, here's some of the things that I, um, realized, mm-hmm. And what I would say to you is even now I have things that pop up. And um, so when I wrote this, I wrote this because I had a contrary medical report even Mm -hmm. after all this healing in my life and um, decided to write a few things that I don't typically hear from people. And um, so here's a few things. So before any appointment or test, Focus your attention and imagination on God, Mm -hmm. because if you go in with the imaginations of everything else, then you don't hear from the perspective of what God has for you. Mm -hmm. And so the scripture that I I tend to go to is 2 Corinthians 10, 5, where Mm -hmm. it says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing it into captivity, every thought to the Mm -hmm. obedience of Christ. And so... It's just walking into the doctor's appointments with the Mm -hmm. imagination that God loves me so much that he has complete wholeness Mm -hmm. and I am healed. Yeah. And then when you go to the doctor with that thought, Mm -hmm. 
then you can look at that report with that per perspective yeah, yeah. instead of being caught up. Because you're not, you're not going to find out what's wrong. Right. You're going with the idea of I'm already healed. They're going to tell me something that's contrary to what I already know. So thank you for that, but I already know I'm healed. Exactly. Just like what uh, John Osteen, like he would tell the, do the doctors finally learned what he knew all along. You know, and um, that, that verse you just read where it talks about taking everything into captivity to the, what is it saying? Into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Well, before, uh, back up. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God. Okay, so every high thing and every thing that comes against the knowledge of God, God's knowledge. We think, and well, just hit the microphone, sorry. But what I always interpreted that was take it into what I knew of God. And that is so far short of what it's saying. It's saying we have to take everything to what God knows. Mm -hmm. So the thought that comes to you and says, oh, you have a diagnosis of MS, you're going to be in a wheelchair. You have to say, well, God, what do you know about that? What do you know about my future? Mm -hmm. Oh, my plan, your plans for me are good and perfect. And I'm able to do everything you called me to do. I can't do that if I'm in a wheelchair. I can't go up spiral staircases. 20 times a day if I'm in a wheelchair. Well, it'd be terrible, but you could, I guess. <laughs> At least go down. <laughs> but so we take it into captivity to the knowledge of God. And it's into Christ's obedience. Mm -hmm. Not my obedience to what Christ tells me. Again, that, that verse has so much, I think, misinterpretation of what it's saying. Like, how obedient was Christ? He was obedient to death, even death on the cross. Philippians 2. What are we obedient to? Like, we're, we're taking this into captivity to his obedience. And why, why is that so? Because what he was obedient, well, obedient to defeated everything that I'm in contradiction with. Yes. And um, it kind of brings, um, I remember a conversation we had and you said, I knew I could have gave you a desk downstairs, mm -hmm. but I chose to leave it upstairs. Mm -hmm. And I was so thankful for that because every time I walked up the staircase, there was two things that was happening. Mm -hmm. Was uh, I was hmm. just so thankful, like every time. And then on the days that was I had challenging, challenging, mm -hmm. um, I could, I knew, and God met me there. And I knew that it wasn't going to stay. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but the other big thing that, I don't know why it took me so long in this process, but just realizing that doctors, no matter how good or Christian, uh, they are a professional mm -hmm. that practices medicine. They practice mm -hmm. medicine based on education, insurance, um, uh, the practices of the season, mm -hmm. pharmaceutical companies, mm -hmm. and to try not to get a lawsuit. <laughs> right. That's one of their biggest concerns. So when you go to a doctor, you don't have to jump through every hoop because you have to understand that no matter how good they are and how Christian they are, they have certain things that they need to follow. So if your blood work mm -hmm. says ABC, mm -hmm. They have to say, mm -hmm. a lot of times, we're going to do this test, this test, this yep. test, this test. And then for insurance to get insurance to pay for your test, they have to put a label mm -hmm. on you. Mm -hmm. What you do with that label is so important. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Because as you leave with that label, and they did all of this because of what hoops they are required to jump mm -hmm. through. Mm -hmm. And to get your insurance to pay. Mm -hmm. So if you go in with the wrong perspective and you don't go with that in mind, then what happens is you put that higher than the word of God and the mm -hmm. truth of who he is. Yep. And what hit me the hardest is then I realized that I worshiped that more mm -hmm. than God. Oof. Because I allowed that to label me. I allowed that to decide my day. Mm -hmm. I allowed that to decide my healing. I allowed that to decide 
against the truth and the word of God. So therefore, I worshipped my doctors uh -huh. when I jumped through their hoops and I didn't even take it before God because this is just what you do, right? Uh -huh. If you have an autoimmune, this is just the way it is. Uh -huh. And the truth is, is all of that is a lie. Your doctor might be very, very, very good, but they are in a realm and in a world mm -hmm. of numbers, statistics, and not to get sued. <laughs> right. Their insurance, your insurance company makes them mm -hmm. do certain tests. Mm -hmm. They make them put you on certain medicines, and they make you walk that line. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying to say no to anything. Sure. I'm just saying that you definitely need to put it in the perspective of what um, does God say? Mm -hmm. And also, it's okay to get a second opinion. It's okay to pause on a test. Mm -hmm. It's okay to pause on certain medicines. Mm -hmm. It's okay to just say, hey, let's wait a minute. You know, what would happen? And by all means, ask every single question there is. Yeah. Because a lot of times if you ask questions, like one, there was a procedure I was supposed to have like right away. And I said, so what would happen if we waited? Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, you know, this could happen or that could happen. And I said, well, if those things happen, how life threatening is it and how urgent it is it? And they're like, well, it's not. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so we're going to wait. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're going to wait. Yeah. And we're going to see what happens. I'm going to give time for me to go to the yep. word and go to God and go to the people that are close to me that can hold me accountable. And, you know, I'm not saying that to always say no to surgery or mm -hmm. to say no to a procedure, but always go with the perspective and with the righteousness of, you know, I walk in righteousness of God. And so therefore I am going to go before him mm -hmm. and put it before him mm -hmm. what we're going to do. And not run in fear of anyone. Mm -hmm. Because anyone that I'm running in fear of, anyone that I am saying yes to mm -hmm. without putting it before God is who I worship. Yeah, that's true. And then the other thing is establish that what helps that is establish who knows you more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does a doctor know you more? <laughs> Does your friend down the street know you more? Mm hmm. Does the friend or the person, and not even a friend, the it could person, be your mom, your dad, your spouse? Yes. And, or this is the favorite one the one that has similar symptoms to oh, you. Oh, yeah. Do they know you more? Or does God, your creator? Mm -hmm. And the scripture that I love about this is Psalms 139. <laughs> And I'm not going to read it all. I have it all here, but I'm, it says, <laughs> but in Psalms 139, it says, you are so intimately aware mm -hmm. of me, Lord. You've read my heart like an open book and you know all the words I'm about to speak. Before I even start a sentence, you know every step I will take and before my journey be even begins. You've gone into my future and prepared the way and in kindness you follow behind me to mm. spare me from harm of my past. <laughs> and then um, if you skip down to um, if you skip down to 14, it says, I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. Everything you do is marvelously breathtaking. Mm -hmm. It simply amazes me to think about it, how thoroughly you know me, Lord. You even you've even formed my every bone in my body when you created me in a secret place carefully and skillfully you shaped me from nothing to something you saw who you created me to be before I became me before I e ever even seen the light of day the number of days you planned for me were already recorded in your book so mm -hmm. who knows you more and once you what translation was that that was most likely the passion. Okay, yeah, that's what it sounded like. Um, yeah, who knows you more? Mm -hmm. And once you establish that, God, my creator, who wove my bones together, mm -hmm. before I was in my mother's womb, and, and another scripture says, before you were in your mother's womb, yeah, he knew you. <laughs> and so who knows you more? And so often we run to our doctors, we run to Google, we run to our friend, we run to people, we run to um, identity books. Yeah, oh more. gosh. Yeah. 
And so... Um, uh, let me just read. I just want to read the last verse. This is the NLT in that 139. And this is what God was doing over the last several years for you. Point out anything in me that offends you. This is the prayer of the person to God. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the paths of everlasting life. Yeah. <laughs> what is in us that offends God, believing that we're sick? That's offensive because, think of it, it's offensive because he knows the price that was paid for you to be healed. That could, that, if I paid like, you know, for a bottle of water for you, like $10,000 and you just like poured it out, like, you're not using it for its intended purpose. And that could be, that has a possibility of being offensive, you know? And think about it, God knows what he's, how he's made you. He knows what he's done to reinstitute or to bring you back into his blueprint design. And so when you're operating outside that, you're believing a lie. It's, you're basically saying you didn't, like the gift that Jesus did for my healing wasn't, it's not enough. I got it. So God, point out in us what's offensive to you. Yeah. Um, at one point, you know, God said he would heal my body and all the things around me. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. told you, I mm -hmm. was like, I didn't know that all the things around me was me too. <laughs> <laughs> That's been a fun journey. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. <sighs> um, it's just so funny. <laughs> Oh Go ahead. I got a whole other podcast on that. <laughs> well, you know, um, <laughs> a part of your healing mm. journey is understanding God's love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that you're in the truth that you're already healed. Mm -hmm. And also releasing unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. And then I think the biggest perspective for me is that. Um, I think we excuse our responses towards everything outside. And God's like, I just want you to trust me mm -hmm. in everything, right? And, um, and it's so amazing how much peace comes in your life when you're able to be like, okay. Mm -hmm. And whatever situation that is, you're like, okay, God is my source. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's the source of my joy. He's the source of my peace. Mm -hmm. And um, as that started happening in my life, I was kind of able, like my whole attitude towards all the medical stuff changed. Mm -hmm. And the statement, like I couldn't really get all of that out. So the statement was, I just really don't have time for that. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and so they would like come to me and they, they would want to do a procedure or they would want to do whatever. And I'm like, I'm just looking at it and I'm like, I don't have time for that. Like, I have so much more to do. Mm -hmm. And um, and I sounded, then I sounded like the punk because I would be with these specialists, you know, and um, I would just look at them and be like, I just don't have time for that. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I don't have time for it. And um, that's all I could get out mm -hmm. for, for the mm -hmm. most part. And then as, as more healing was evident in my life, then I was able to say, you know, mm -hmm. God has been changing my thought process yeah. towards what I already have. And um, <laughs> so um, one of the things I would say is don't ever enter a medical situation without being aware of the weight. And mm. that sounds probably a little bit con like contrary to what we're talking about. But what I'm saying is this, when you are have chronic illness and you're going to doctor's appointment after doctor's appointment after doctor's appointment, it just becomes your norm. It's your life. And inside that doctor's appointment is people who are dealing with chronic things as well. Mm -hmm. and you're sitting in all these situations and you're with all this medical stuff. And there's just a certain, like there's a certain smell, there's a certain atmosphere to all medical situations. Mm -hmm. And so don't let that be your norm. And don't walk into that situation without arm putting on your armor of the truth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's actually the scripture that I have is in Ephesians 6 mm -hmm. uh, and 10. It says, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be, uh, may be 
able to stand against the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this mm -hmm. world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, mm -hmm. that you may be able to withstand the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand, therefore, mm -hmm. having your loins guarded about with truth, and having on the blessed breastplate of righteousness i can't talk and your feet in the preparation of the gospel of peace mm -hmm. above all take the shield of faith and then ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god um I think I got in such a practice of going to doctor's appointments. That was mm. just my thing. Mm -hmm. And some people saw it as a spiritual thing mm. and a faith. And I just want to call that out because just because you can go to doctor's appointment after mm -hmm. doctor's appointment mm -hmm. after doctor's appointment and be okay doesn't mean that you're putting on the armor of God. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, with people who are in that cycle, go to them use wisdom but go and have your armor of god on and have a plan mm -hmm. so my plans were a little crazy but um <laughs> i just made sure i had a time of worship while i was there mm -hmm. i put earphones in my ears in the waiting room um i um i had my sermons laid out that i was going to listen to on pop on podcast um and then i have a, a few go-to's like there's a hundred and one healing scriptures by mm -hmm. Copeland and I yeah, have that yeah. playing in the atmosphere at my home and um, so just have your plan and um, don't go without that and then if the report is contrary to the word of God have a plan mm -hmm. and I put don't Google so I'm going to rephrase that because um, I Google everything um, <laughs> you should Google Kelly's name no, no, no <laughs> don't do that um as you are Googling, <laughs> um, make sure that you are doing your plan and you're in the Word of mm -hmm. God. And you can Google it, but also know that that is just their perspective. And don't go mm -hmm. deep. One of the things yeah. that comes with autoimmune is there's all these groups, support groups. Mm -hmm. So that's the other thing. Your support group, that's great. You want a support group, but make sure your support group is going the direction mm -hmm. that you're going. I was a part of an MS group that actually had a party when people went to their wheelchair. Oh, wow. And I just want to say that... Um, I understand what they're trying to do. Yes. But man. Mm. So if your support group is not going the direction that you are wanting to believing go yeah and believing for get out of that group um and go to people mm -hmm. they might not understand because that is the attraction mm -hmm. right sure when i started the support group the attraction was you know there's not a lot of people that understood that when i woke up in the morning and my feet my feet would hit the floor i would have to balance against the wall mm -hmm. until i could walk right like and there's not a lot of people. So when you're in a group and people are talking. Oh, about, yeah, we get it. Yeah, you know, and then they tell you little tips mm -hmm. that they do to be right. better. Because they're just being real. Right. Mm -hmm. That was, yes. <laughs> well, and, and that's the thing is that, you know, I, I was attracted to that mm -hmm. because in my world, people would say, well, you just, you need to speak the scripture. Mm -hmm. um, you need... To this. Yeah. And so when people would ask me how I was doing and I would actually s speak, mm -hmm. then I would be criticized told, and yeah. 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 And so, or, but what's worse than that is when you speak real and then they, they comfort you to the fact that, well, you know, don't worry soon you'll be in a wheelchair and you'll feel relief. Mm -hmm. um, I think I would rather go back to the criticism. <laughs> um, and yeah. so just make sure that the support that you're getting is going the direction of the truth that you're going to. Yeah. And um, I think that a lot of people, um, a lot of people 
fill, you know, you want an identity. Mm -hmm. And so with big name stuff and the support that's behind it, it does give you an identity Mm -hmm. if you're not careful. Yeah. And I, once again, challenge you to go to the word of God. Who does he say you are? Yeah. Yep. And what does he say you are? Because um, there are certain, unfortunately, things like Emma's and autoimmune and stuff like that. Cancer, cancer, diabetes, whatever. Yes, that gives you a certain... Migraines. Um, yes, they'll give you a certain support group, identity, mm-hmm. and then you can start carrying that identity. And so the question that I had to ask myself is, am I here to worship my creator, God, or am I going to worship MS? Mm. And yeah. And so, and that sounds a little bit strong, but when you are dealing with a cycle that's every day um, in your face, you have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Because the person that you worship is the truth that you should be reading. And what I had to decide is it was okay for me to read some things about MS, but at the end of the day, not really. Because what truth do I want to, Mm -hmm. what truth am I going to talk to my body? Because I went back to that three-part being. Yep, yep, yep. And so when you start reading stuff over and over about whatever Mm -hmm. diagnosis that they are trying to give you. And by the way, your diagnosis really wasn't for your identity. For the doctor, it was for your insurance so that they will pay the bill. They want (laughs) their money. That's right. And so they have to give you a name for their bill. Mm -hmm. And so when they give you the name for the bill, don't take that as your identity because your identity is in Christ. And so the hardest thing to do is when someone gives you a diagnosis, you need to take that to the word of God and say, hey, does that fit what God made me for? Because he's the one that wove my bones together. He knew me before I was in my mother's womb. Mm -hmm. Does that identity fit to his love that he has for me? And when you start putting that together, then you start running Mm -hmm. to your master instead of to a disease. Ooh, that's good. That's good. That's the decision that I had to make. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is to keep your information to a small group of like-minded people. Amen. That will not be moved, but will pray. And um, so... That's not Facebook. Yes. Not Facebook. You're not going to ever see me post anything mm-hmm. on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times people that are around me, they get a little bit annoyed because mm-hmm. they know that I might be walking through something and I don't talk about it. Um, and it's not because I think all those people are contrary to what I believe, but I keep my very small, mm-hmm. my group very small, because what you talk about is what you focus on. Yep. And what you focus on is what directs you. Mm -hmm. And so you have to walk in wisdom. And um, it's like the verse I I said Sunday, looking unto Jesus. Yes. That word look means to take your gaze off of one thing and focus it on another. So remove it from the distraction or the contradiction. Defeat the contradiction by looking to Jesus, the answer, the healer. And when when you talk to people... And let's say they're, let's just for principle's sake say that they're all great Mm -hmm. people. And you talk to people over and over, you're still remaining your focus and you're speaking that over your body over and over as you speak that over Mm -hmm. and over. And so I don't post anything on Facebook. I don't ask people, random people for prayer. (laughs) I don't, yeah. I don't do those things Good. <laughs> uh, because you need those like-minded people that will wrap yeah. around you and will walk with you. And who also won't go tell people and spread to people who don't have the same belief and faith. Yes. And also, just a side note moment that they oh. will probably want to edit. Um, for all the people that listen to this, when someone comes to you with any kind of symptom, diagnosis, mm-hmm. do not go, well, my aunt had that, and blah, 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 oh. blah, or that sounds like blah, 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 and start speaking things into existence. Yes. Because what happens is That's good. you are speaking 
into existence what's in their life. And what needs to come out of you is the word of God. Yes. And so I challenge every single person that hears this, go right now, go to the word of God and write out your uh, expression that you're going to have when somebody comes to you, because it's going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. Someone's going to come to you and say, I got a diagnosis of cancer. What are you going to say? You know, mm -hmm. and make sure that it's the word yeah. of God that comes out of your mouth. Because in one of the scriptures is in Second Timothy 1, 7, is that we do not, ha we're not given to the spirit of fear, but yep, power, yep. love, and a sound mind. Make sure that power, love, and a sound mind comes out of you when someone comes to you with a diagnosis mm -hmm. and prepare your words. Yep. And, That's so good. Um, and so I um, just challenge you because um, so often what happened to me is when people like I didn't I didn't even really tell people that I had a full diagnosis of MS because I had so many family members afraid of that. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't tell them because they were so fearful. of Yeah. It. And um, and then also for anyone that's dealing with the illness, do not hold to your past or what is familiar and do not run to those experiences, but mm -hmm. run to the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And so, and then also, uh, remember that you don't have to run on the doctor's schedule or urgency. Mm -hmm. Um, so don't be unwise about that, but also as well, know that they are setting up a schedule. They're setting up, um, everything Mo by all the hoops that they have. I was going to say most of the time it's the insurance schedule. Yes. It's not even their preferred schedule. Right. It's what the insurance says to do. And so they have to say it first. Mm -hmm. So if you just simply ask a question, what would happen if I wait? Mm -hmm. What would you do if I was your sister? What would you suggest if I was your family member? Mm -hmm. Then they can speak um, against the schedule that they're giving you. Because a lot of times there's many things that they have to do at that appointment when certain reports come mm -hmm. about. And so don't be afraid to ask questions. And then for anyone that's dealing with chronic challenges, it goes back to remembering that you're a three-part being. Mm -hmm. That your body is built around what is familiar. Don't be surprised if your body tries to revert back to what was instead of the word of God. Because what happens is the, your body is made of cells. Yep. And what God put in order, when something tries to attack it, it takes it out of his order. So what you have to do is in these moments, it's important to speak the word to your body out loud, to not be mad at your own body, <laughs> to cast every anxious thought, to know that even our body's responses doesn't change the word of God. You are healed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, and yeah, so then I guess the only other thing is don't spiritualize away the actual need, needed disciplines you need for your body. For instance, exercising, your nutrition, mm -hmm. those drinking water. Don't spiritualize that away. Don't talk about like, you know, um, because of the healing of God and the truth of his, that I am healed. I don't need to drink water. Um, yeah. I can live on a steady diet of Mountain Dew and chocolate Long John's. Yes. Don't do that. Um, because um, a lot of times there's like these ditches that you can go to. Mm -hmm. And so you're either in the, you know, you could go into this ditch where you're like everything the doctor says, mm -hmm. but you can also go into this ditch when the doctor is telling you to drink water, telling you to eat certain things. Simple, basic things. Yes. Yeah, telling you not to eat something. Mm -hmm. That's things that you should be doing, you know? And, yeah. um, and so my biggest, like my key thing, when I walk into the doctor's office, if it's something that I can do that is not like a prescription mm -hmm. or something like that, then I do it. I do it. Um, if it's something that they're suggesting, like you should drink more water, you should, you know, simple things, I do it because God ha ha wants us to take care of our bodies. Mm -hmm. um, if it's something that's a procedure, that's a prescription, that's um, something like that, then I have to, I walk out of the office and I process. Mm -hmm. And then I usually talk to someone and um, after I pray and stuff. 
And so after you pray about your decision, about a procedure especially, mm-hmm. go to someone and then lay that before them. Mm-hmm. Because if it's God, then they can then they can help you and agree and confirm that. And I think a lot of times where we get in trouble is we deal with things by ourselves because we were never called to do that. And mm-hmm. then when we feel like we heard from God, we don't go to anyone else to help us yep. in that process. Because what you want to make sure is that you're hearing from God and you're not hearing from fear yeah. or whatever stuff. Cause Wrong I voice. Like yeah. <laughs> so, um, yep. And then don't allow... Uh, oh, yeah. Don't allow yourself to just be thankful for your good days mm-hmm. and that that's all that God has for you. Mm-hmm. So be thankful for your good days. For people who are dealing with chronic things that are contrary to the word of God, be thankful for your good days. But God wants you whole mm-hmm. and completely healed from head to toe. Every day a good day. And also, mm-hmm. you know, my good day was I didn't have a migraine all day. I just had one for half the day. Mm-hmm. Um, don't allow yourself to go to that truth. Yeah. And... Um, and so what happened in my life and has continued is that MS was taken off my record. I went from 29 months and two infusions to zero. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I walk everywhere. So, in fact, what I'm known for is walking. Yep. And I think that's hilarious. I was in a meeting this morning and they were talking about, well, you know, everybody knows you for walking. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden it hit my mind that, You know, I wasn't supposed to be walking right now. No, I was supposed to be in a wheelchair. I was supposed to be in a wheelchair. I used to have to, like, you know, hold on to go off, like, curbs and the pain I used to feel Mm -hmm. in my legs. And now I have no pain at all, no balance issues at all. And I just continue um, to walk. And it's all because, you know, God didn't heal me. I I know that my testimony is, he said, if you'll say yes to me, Mm -hmm. I will heal your body and all the things around you. But I want to clarify that because me saying yes to him it was doing stuff, but me saying yes to him was so that he could heal my mm-hmm. mind, my spirit, my heart, because he loved me so yeah. much. He loved me so much that he wanted me in an environment that the fullness of who he is could be, I could be walking in that. Yeah. And so for me and my journey, that was saying yes to him in the things that he had before me. But everything that God asks you to do is to put you in an atmosphere because Mm -hmm. he loves you so much. And in the midst of the overflow, things will happen and you will touch people and you will start walking in what you see. I spent so many years striving to be what God wanted me to be. And what I didn't understand is he didn't need me to strive at all. Mm -hmm. He just needed me to know how much his love for me was. Mm -hmm. And in that fullness, we will see the revivals, we will see the the power healings, we will see the power gifts that you're striving for. Yes. Because you walk in the fullness of his love. And not in the fullness of his love for others, even though it's good to show that, but first for you, to know that God loves you so much that he wants you complete and whole, lacking nothing. And that means that he doesn't just want you to have the ability to make it through the day. He doesn't Mm -hmm. just want you to have the ability to preach his word. He doesn't want you just to have the ability to do his his whatever. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's not even on his mind. You first are on Mm -hmm. his mind. Yep. Got it? All right. And that's, that is so vital to understand. And that's why whenever I started this healing series, the first episode I did was about his love for us because it all begins with knowing his love for us. That's the foundation that everything's built on. So um, I believe you got something from today. Uh, If you didn't listen to it again, Um, thank you, Kelly, for coming on. She loves doing these. Absolutely. So (laughs) um, thank you once again, everybody, for watching, listening, engaging, commenting, all that fun stuff. Uh, If you listen to Apple Podcasts or Spotify later, leave us a rating, review, comment. We really appreciate it. Um, Thank you again for being on here. 
Thank you all for watching. Thank you, Emily, for helping record all these and Skylar for getting this all set up. Love you all. God bless. Have a great day.